So let's talk about the socially awkward dogs. We've been talking about the shepherd. And socially awkward dogs, does anybody know a socially awkward dog? I have one. Yeah, I know. We're like, yeah, I have one too. Okay, Bodie would be my socially awkward dog. And these dogs often stay at the perimeter. You know, they kind of want to run with other dogs, but they don't know how to get in and play. And, you know, other dogs are kind of wrestling and they want to, but they don't know. And it's really kind of sad. You know, it's like we won't, they won't let me join in their reindeer games, you know. So, so a problem is that the socially awkward dogs are often opportunistic. And we saw this with the shepherd, right? Because he didn't do anything, if you notice, until the Aussie mounted the chocolate lab. And then the shepherd said, oh, good, now that you're busy doing that, I'll jump on the conga line too, you know? And, and so I'm going to show you, um, again, the poor German shepherd. Yeah, you're going to do the head and everything? Yep. But I have no idea. And I have no interest in running a DNA test on him to find out, so... Blue. These dogs are all fine. Not a problem. Hi, I'm here. Can I play with you? And four is a party. <laughs> Anybody paying any attention to him whatsoever? No. And really, the two white dogs there want to play with each other. The puppy's really trying to get into it with them, too. Ooh, these dogs are playing fine. I, you feel kind of sorry for him. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of sad. I mean, you do feel bad for him. He's, he's just socially awkward. And maybe, hopefully, that would, that would get better over time. But again, um, it's interesting because when you get, you remember we talked about the dyads and the two dogs playing. A lot of times when a third dog comes over, I mean, they were just ignoring him, basically. But a lot of times when a third dog comes over, there can be a fight. Dogs can really take exception to that. And, and one may try to run the dog off a few times, and if he doesn't listen, they can really get into it. Um, there was another study in 2008 by Camille Ward, Rebecca Trisco, and Barbara Smuts, and they studied play fighting among littermates. They found that when two dogs were fighting and a third one intervened, the one who intervened would target the dog that was in the losing role at the time of the intervention, which makes total sense. Think about kids in a schoolyard. If you jump into something, what are you going to do? You're going to pile up on the poor kid who's being beat up. You're not going to go, oh, let me jump in and whack you, right? I mean, it doesn't work that way. Um, so they, they don't target, sometimes they targeted the dog in the winning role, but more of the time, 69% of the time, it was the dog in the losing role. And this can really uh, reinforce kind of the dominance relationships. Dominance relationships in play r with dogs who kind of know each other or live together will mirror, usually, the relationship outside of play. So in other words, if Sierra was the one that was like always sort of more dominant, Bodie's not going to suddenly be mounting her and all of that stuff you know, at the park. And, and she is the one that's more dominant. So <laughs> this is my poor boy being socially awkward. Very sad. Again, these two are perfectly happy playing with each other. Look at how obnoxious that poodle is, the way he bonks that other dog with his nose. And poor Bodie, he's just like, I just want to hang around with you guys. Let's run over here now. Look, Mom, I'm playing with them. Actually, this was good progress for Bodhi, <laughs> believe it or not. And at first, he just would sort of avoid or not even try to, you know, be social with other dogs. Bodhi, Bodhi. Come here, Bodhi. He's a good boy. I 
Now watch what happens here with Copper, the little dog. And what's Bodhi doing here? He's positioning himself so they can gang up on this little dog. Bodhi! Bodhi! Come! Bodhi, come! Good boy, Bode, Bode! Bode, Bode! Bodhi! Come! Good boy, Bode! So, so he... I mean, it's problematic to me what he was doing when that little dog was down on the ground. And that's, again, remember the shepherd. A lot of times the dogs who are socially awkward, they will wait for an opening where they can get in there because somebody's down on the ground or somebody's in a compromised position. And that, that can be a problem. Okay. Um, I want to talk about dangerous scenarios. And what are some precursors to potential problems? What can we look for? Well, number one, arousal. Over arousal is one of the worst things because when things start to amp up, and you can feel it, it's almost like the energy shifts and you can really just feel it. Maybe it's not consciously something that you saw, but you're like, I don't know, this is starting to feel like these dogs are getting a little too wound up. Um, that can be a problem. So you have increased speed and we have free, infrequent pausing. You saw with a lot of the kind of nice loose play, the dogs naturally created pauses for themselves, whether it was by doing a play bow or just kind of stopping. Sierra and Bodie even went and got water. That was like a big pause. Um, you, more usually it, it's momentary pauses. So if I start to see that there's fewer pauses, that things are getting really amped up, the body's again becoming more vertical. If the dogs really don't know each other, that would worry me the play becoming rougher in general, and the change in vocalizations. Because we know that dogs vocalize when they play, a lot of them. You know, Sierra, even when she plays with dogs she doesn't know, it's interesting, and I don't know what the criteria is with her. With certain dogs, she'll kind of, you know, while she's playing. And with certain dogs, it's silent. And I really don't know. Maybe it's, you know, this dog can handle it, and the other one can't. I can tell you, though, very often the owner can't handle it. The owner is going, why is your dog growling at my dog? It's just the way she plays. You know, which if I heard somebody else say that, I might be going, I don't know, do you really know? But, but I do know my own dog, obviously. So I, I want to look at some truly potentially dangerous scenarios that can happen, other than things just escalating. One of the things that can happen is that the dog uh, guards the owner. And interestingly, a lot of times owners are kind of oblivious that the dog is even doing this. And th this was, again, taken at the dog park near me. <laughs> Obviously, the most dangerous thing about the dog park is that you might spill your coffee. <laughs> Got to be very careful about that. But watch this Aussie. Work for the Aussie? No, I don't think so. Okay, and I've obviously the sound is off on this one, but but he was barking at the other dogs as well. He's like, Dad, don't pet him. What are you doing? So we're going to get them more amped up. <laughs> I don't know what he was saying. I, I, no, no, he definitely wasn't admonishing him. I know that much. I mean, he might have been just saying something to him, like, come on, let's, let's move. He wanted to get to the back of the park, you know. He, I don't think that he saw anything wrong with the dog's behavior. You know, I think he just wanted to get to the back and talk to his friends who he meets there and, and have the dogs play, you know, like, like it was just another day. But look at what the Aussie's doing. Okay, he's, he's placing his body, you know, between the other dogs and his owner. 
he's running this one off and then immediately turning right back, coming right back to the owner, and you too, you get away from him too. He's using his paw, he's using his mouth to tell them. A little shake off. There's a lot of tension. Yeah, whoever said that, it's a lot of work. This dog is not having a nice relaxing time at all. Yeah, great comment. Yeah, she said that the dog is going to go home and be exhausted and the owner is going to think, yeah, didn't he have a great time at the park? Look how tired he is. This is exhausting for this dog, but he doesn't see it is the thing. You know, and I don't think he's a bad guy. I mean, he just really honestly doesn't see what his dog is doing. Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. I mean, he's just trying to get in and get through. All he sees is, look, there's a bunch of dogs. I want to get with my dog to the back of the park. Oh, slam him in the crotch. Yeah. <laughs> now no one will want you. Yeah, yeah the boxer is pretty relentless. Well... Good question. So what steps should he take? Well, first of all, I don't think it's appropriate really that this dog is in the park with him, for one thing. But for another thing, to me, when dogs are guarding people, I have the person actually walk away from the dog so that the dog learns that when he starts that behavior, he loses the very thing that he's guarding. This guy, you know, I mean, he, he doesn't know. He's just like, okay, let me pet this dog. And the dog's like, oh, God, now you're petting them. What do I have to do here? And especially the boxer. Look, he's about to pet the boxer. <laughs> so, again, this dog was really being territorial of his owner. You know? And sometimes the dogs are not territorial necessarily of their owner, but they can become territorial of the park. If you take a dog to the same park or the same play area repeatedly, guess what? Some of the dogs will become really territorial of that area. So I'm going to show you another video, and this is a, um, the small dog area, lest you think that it's only the big dog area where these things happen. And this is literally a pissing contest between these dogs. He wanted it. It's mine. And then he it's my park, no, it's yours. Energy? He's like, how high can I get my pee? Sometimes there's a thing I do set up in the I'll be off for a week Oh, that's good. Did you see him do that? And then he goes back and he, he's, he's going to do it again? On the other side, just in case I missed a spot. The joke's on him. This one dog came over and, and got it afterwards. So you really can get a lot of territorial behavior, even with the smaller dogs. Yeah. Oh, that weird thing? <laughs> that was really kind of funny. I mean, the, the, she's talking about the little dog who, who um, did his thing and then kind of went... <laughs> you know? I mean, you know that a lot of times, and, and this is interesting, a lot of times after dogs mark, they do this kind of kicking back thing. I'm sure a lot of you have seen this. Um, Bodhi does that. Interestingly, Bodhi actually used to growl while he was doing that. So he'd pee, and there's no other dogs in sight. He would pee, and then he'd go, Whoa. And I mean, I wish I had it on video. It was the funniest thing. Um, but I, I think that he's doing his little weird version of, of doing the kicking back thing. And really, if you think about it, it's, it's their way of kind of dispersing the scent. You know, why are they marking in the first place? I was here, you know, and, and now it's dispersing the scent even more. Yeah. So any other questions before I... No? Okay. Um, so another dangerous situation is when the mobility of one dog is limited. You know, we saw when Bodhi and the other dog sort of ganged up on that poor little copper. And that wasn't good because pop, copper couldn't really get up, you know. And, and granted, that wasn't a serious aggression situation. But it always worries me when there's a dog who's down on the ground and he tries to get up and the other dogs kind of knock him down or keep him down. Because so, that dog is not having any fun. Is the little dog on the floor having any fun at all? 
No, I don't think so either. And really, and he's a young dog, so really what's he learning? What happens when I go to the dog park? It's a negative experience. When another dog is coming towards me, this is what ends up happening. And maybe the next step is when another dog comes towards me, I better take the offense. Dogs can learn all kinds of really troublesome behavior there. Now, we've been talking a lot about how dogs play in dyads and how another dog coming in, you know, can cause a problem sometimes. So I want to show you a couple of short videos of how, you know, three's a crowd sometimes. And uh, I'll give you a comment afterwards. The Bull Terrier and the other dog are playing just fine. There's nothing wrong between them. It's the Boston that you want to watch, the little black and white one. So they're just kind of ignoring them, right? We'll, we'll just go over here and play. And the Boston says, no, I want to play too. Little dog runs them off. Just runs them off again. He doesn't know how to take a hint, does he? Well, that's true. Yeah, obviously she's saying obviously the owner doesn't either. Yeah. I mean, how many times did that little brown dog... I mean, at first they just ignored him. And then he got so insistent and crappy about it that the little brown dog said, I need to run you off. Boston's like, la, 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 I'm back. Run you off again. Third, and then there was a little skirmish, right? Again, if you were not somebody who knew about canine body language or interactions, what would you think? Yeah. God, did you see what your dog did? He ran after that poor little Boston Terrier. You know? and, and I see that happen quite a lot at the park, unfortunately. People don't know, and they just see the dog going after another dog, but they don't see what caused it. You know? That happens a lot at home, by the way, in, in cases where there's dog-dog aggression. A lot of times people will say, oh, this one dog is going after the other dog. They never see the way that that dog taunted that dog until he finally felt like he had to retaliate. So really, really good to watch these things in slow motion for that. Okay. Um, I'm going to show you another video of Three's a Crowd. And this is uh, Nico, the husky that was in this, who used to be a friend of Sierra until they moved away. So Nico is going to start playing with a lab. And watch how Nico actually gets snarky with Sierra when she tries to get in on it. Did you see that? <laughs> He's like, come on, back off. If he could have mouthed the words back off, he would have. <laughs> and she says, hey, yeah, how about you? You want to play with me? <laughs> but at least she can take a hint. At least he didn't have to nail her. And they are buddies, her and Nico. So, you know, they've got good signals between them. Plus, they're similar breeds. She's, you know, he's a husky and she's a husky mix. Um, so three's a crowd often is a problem. Interestingly, when two dogs are playing and a third one comes in and one of those two dogs kind of, you know, goes to run the dog off, owners will say, oh, look how cute. She's protecting him, like from the dog who's coming in. And usually, no, not so much. They're protecting their little, you know, duo play here. So um, somebody had mentioned this earlier, and yes, I am going to talk about this bullying and targeting a dog, which is a real problem. Now, there's a difference between kind of three's a crowd where another dog comes in and, you know, just kind of wants to get in and play with the other ones. That's, you know, it, it's usually harmless unless it escalates. But we do have dogs that come in and you could just tell, you know how like somebody walks into, I don't know, like there's a gathering, let's say a bar, you know, people are at a bar and people, you know, they're having fun and somebody walks in and you just know like the vibe changes and this person is just looking for trouble, you know. And I'm going to tell you that at the little doggy bar here at the park, this dog named Laser is looking for trouble.
So these dogs are okay. Razor. Again, Shepherd. Hey. You, you know? But Laser is an inappropriate dog, and he's a little bit of a bully. And this is Laser's mom. No, she did get in there, okay? She, she did immediately go over and grab him. But watch. Blue. Oh. Blue is the pit puppy. This, by the way, was a dog that this woman had had from the shelter for two days. And she thought, let's find out how he is with other dogs. Fortunately, he was fine. Yeah. Blue is cute. So you could see the beginning of that clamping on thing happening. Okay, so she pulled him off, which was great, but he went right back to it. And now she's just standing there. Okay. Hey, hey, hey. So the thing is, just pulling him off and saying hey is not solving the problem. I mean, it's good that she did it, don't get hey, me wrong. Stop that. This dog should be out of the park at this point. He has a thing about smaller dogs. He has a thing about smaller dogs than him. So she knows this. She's seen the behavior before. And he is. He's a bully. There's a lot of chin over. There's a lot of mounting. And it's not in a happy play bow kind of way. His tail is up and kind of cocky. He's not... The blue, the pit bull puppy? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, honestly, if that was my pit bull puppy, I would be telling her, you need to take your dog and leave. Or I would take my dog and leave. Okay, so you're saying if your dog is causing trouble, you would, what do you mean by hook him up? <laughs> I've got a nice dog for you. <laughs> <laughs> If I keep doing this, she'll hook me up. <laughs> right. So you're saying that you put him on a leash and you stand there and hold him? or? Okay. Okay, so you've got not just a dog park like this. You've got a big area. So you're saying that you put him on leash and you walk him away from where any other dogs are? or? Okay, yeah, I think that's fine because you're essentially giving him a time out. Yeah, I would be worried if you did, and I know you wouldn't, but I'm just putting this out there. I would be worried if you did it in a park like this that's fairly small, where the other dogs could then come over, and because he's restrained, he would feel defensive. But yeah, no, you're, you're doing, yeah, you're giving him a time out. And, and that's why I was saying, you know, take the dog and go. She doesn't have to, like, leave and never come back, but at the very least, I would say to the dog, at the moment he's doing it, I would mark that behavior and go, oh, too bad, so he knows exactly why he's being taken out. Put him on the leash, take him out. You know, and then maybe walk around outside the park for 15 minutes, whatever, come back, try again. Because you know what, how else is he going to learn? I mean, this is management that she's pulling him off, and I give her credit for doing that, you know. But how else is he going to learn that this behavior is not okay? You know? Yeah, well, although I don't know if they really get it. You know, and that's the problem. A lot of the times the dogs are kind of out there in the wind because the people don't really get it. You know? Yeah, I, you well, know, there are mean people in the park, but I think, honestly, there's just more people that don't know. They just don't have a clue. They don't see it. Okay, so she's saying, you know, her dog might run after a dog and grab the dog's hind legs. Think about animals and how they bring down prey. That's not cool. That's not a good thing. Yeah. Good, good. So she's worked on it better. Awesome. Good for you. <laughs> yes. Yeah, but you know what, Sierra, on, on a similar note, has that obnoxious habit. You saw it a little bit with Bodhi in the house where he ran around and she was like, I'm not going to chase you, I'm not a fool, I'm just going to wait and cut you off. She does that same thing with dogs at the park. They'll go racing around, and believe me, she's fast, okay, she could catch them, but she doesn't. She waits for them to come back around and she goes that way and just kind of cuts them off, which is not a good habit. And, and I've seen dogs actually go flying over her, head over heels, which, which you know, again, I don't let her do any of this anymore, but... but that's not a good situation. Was there a question back there? Yeah. In my perfect universe, great question, there would be more... 
I know. And, and uh, her point, your point is well taken, that this is a room full of, obviously, a lot of us are trainers and, and owners who are here to educate themselves more and, and, you know, and great. I think that's awesome. I wish more people would do that. And yeah, I don't know of any movement to educate people who go to the parks. You know, I do know that there are some trainers who in their own communities will have little free, you know, come and learn a little more about body language every now and then, little talks. I don't know that they're very well attended, though. I mean, I would do it if I thought that anybody would come, but they don't. You know? You know, personally, I think that it should be mandatory, you know, before you can go into the park. Because if you give people the choice, they're not going to do it. You know, it's interesting because uh, if you go out to Wolf Park, you know, in Indiana, now they have a thing where if you're going to go in with the wolves, which you don't normally get to go in with the wolves, right? But if you, you know, for whatever reason, you, you donated a lot of money or you, you were there for a photography weekend or a seminar or whatever, you actually have to sit down and watch this film that they have now. You know, this is how you, if a wolf comes up to you, this is what you do. And if he does this, it means this. And I think that's great. And they should have something like that for the dog park before you can go in. And preferably be quizzed on it before. <laughs> you know, were you paying any attention at all? Yeah. And was there, you had a question, right? Okay, so you're suggesting that people go to the park without the dogs, just kind of watch what's going on and see with your beverage of choice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was like, really? How does that help? <laughs> it looks so fuzzy and friendly. <laughs> Four drinks and it looks really fuzzy and friendly. Yeah, so do you find that people follow up and do that? Yeah. yeah. And that's the problem. A lot of times people don't see anything until the dog really gets hurt. And sometimes people don't, not even then. They keep bringing the dog back and the dog's like, you know, I don't want to be here. Something really bad happened to me here. So... Yeah, I mean, the dog park for a lot of owners, it's more for them for than for the dogs. I mean, it's their social life, you know? And I can understand it. It's fun. You get together with other people who have something in common with you. But a lot of times, those people are standing there, and they're chatting, and they're having their lattes and everything else, and they're not even watching what the dogs are doing. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, good point. And that's why a lot of the times they don't leave when they should. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, and I just want to repeat that. Sue Sternberg, who's wonderful, by the way, if you can go see her. And on the subject of dog-dog play, she's awesome. Um, yeah, she says if you see picnic tables or chairs, because you know that people are just going to be sitting around chatting with each other. Yeah. I like a bigger dog park because the dogs have a way to get away from each other. They, they're not, by definition, all squished in like that where, you know, stuff's going to happen. But to answer your question, well, what do you do about your dog getting too far away from you? You don't let them get too far away from you. A really good solid recall stops that. Yeah. Just like the lady with the dog here, you know, two days out. Of, and a dog like that, really? Two days out of the shelter? Yeah, so it would be nice if the shelter, you know, handed out information. Although, to be honest, even if they did... I don't know. You know, I think somebody could create a DVD, you know, that would be given out to owners who adopt. And this is Dog Dog Play. I would love to know the percentage of owners that would actually even watch it. I mean, I don't mean to sound pessimistic. I, I hope that they would and that it would help. And I, I think it would be a step in the right direction, you know, for sure. All we can do is keep trying and keep educating. Yes, yeah, so and now she has three big dogs and her little dog up here, which is why there's a big dog side and a small dog side at a lot of dog parks because a lot of, and small dogs, let's face it, if one dog comes over and just does one grab and shake, the dog is dead, you know? So I'm in favor, I mean, I'm in favor if you run a little play group and you know what you're doing and you've got pairs, yeah, have big dogs and small dogs play if you, you know they can handle it, sure. But at a dog park where nobody knows anything, there should definitely be a small dog area and a big dog area, you know? I think the problem a lot of times is that people have like a big dog and a small dog at home, and so they take one into the other area, which is a problem. Is a redirected activity. Truckee and Tahoe are two dogs that live together. <laughs> this is their owner here. <laughs> they can play really, really rough with each other, and one of them, Truckee, can be a little uh, problem I like being too Well, a lot play. troublesome with other dogs. They know said it so well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she just got a little more size on her. It just seems like it hurts, though, sometimes, you know, where So this they is fine. What they're doing is fine. This is don't the way tell each other. But, I mean, when she's had enough, she'll... Exactly. Like she'll tell them. The teeth, too. So yeah, the she goes, I mean... Max! Oh, Max! Oh, oh. Max! Okay, so this dog, not happy about it? Look. Don't you instigate. Did you see my dad on the other day? Like that. Dog? Top it. I think that's the first time a doggie's tried to meet you that way. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need I to like bark. It. No instigating, please. Huh? 
kind of funny at, at our park. You know, you usually think like there's a lot of women who stand around and gab and all. We have this like clutch of men that come <laughs> on Sunday mornings. And this is like their, you know, their social time with each other. And they've all got their coffee and they hang out and they chat. And it's fine. But a lot of times the dogs are kind of, again, often doing things and it's not really seen. Um, so again, you can get that redirected activity where there was no problem between those two dogs. But when that boxer came in and tried that, not only did this dog want to go after the boxer, he wanted to go after his buddy who didn't do anything. And that can happen a lot of the time. So here, let me ask you this, and I'll bet you'll know the answer to that. What's the most dangerous factor in dog-dog play? No, not it depends. <laughs> That's the answer to every other question I've asked you today. The owners. It's always the owners, okay? Because dogs will do what they do, but if the owners aren't there and they don't manage things well, absolutely a problem. And I know that this one is going to be maybe a little bit difficult for some of you to watch, but... Oh, no, this isn't the terrible one yet. This is an owner giving her dog a timeout. Hello. Which is not great either, by the way. For the life of me, I don't know what her dog does that makes her think she has to give the dog a timeout. He's playing just fine with this other dog. Look at the length of chain she's got in her hand. And not only is she giving a timeout, but she's putting that dog in a very vulnerable position with another dog right there. Okay? That is a really bad idea. I cannot tell you guys, I don't know about you, but around where I am, I cannot tell you how many people I have seen give their dog this kind of correction slash timeout where they put the dog down. I think they've been watching too much television. Okay? They put their dog in a, in a timeout down on the ground, and the dog has to like submit. That's a bad idea. You don't want your dog feeling like that with other dogs around. You're not being an advocate for your dog. It's the opposite. You're putting your dog in a dangerous situation. And what does that do to your relationship? Right? So, so that can be a real problem. Um, now this is... Oh, okay. Let, let's talk first about problematic owner beliefs. I'm going to go through this pretty quick because I do want to show you the other videos. Um, a lot of people think that dogs should not bark or growl during play at all. They hear that just once, and that's it. They stop the play. A lot of times it's totally fine. And you know the difference between a play growl and a serious growl. A lot of people don't. All growling is bad and dangerous. No. Um, keeping dogs on the leash inside the park? Yeah, and I see this quite a bit. You know, and I don't mean like you were saying, you know, to, you know, move them somewhere else or whatever. That's totally fine. But I'm talking about they stand there with the dog on a leash, and there's other dogs coming over and doing all kinds of things, and the poor dog can't go anywhere. Okay, again, that's not somebody who's being an advocate for their dog. Um, people really believe that without training, the dog should just come when you call them at the park. And really, sometimes they have done training at home, and the dog does, you know, come when you call them in the house, but they really don't understand that you have to, you know, build little small increments between point A and point B. The dog is not magically going to listen to you everywhere. And he just needs more socialization. That really irritates me. That's right up there with they just have to work it out. Okay? That's like an excuse. Your dog is being obnoxious or the dogs are fighting. Yeah, they'll work it out. Yeah, he just needs more socialization. It may be that the dog needs more socialization, but the dog park is not the place for him to get that socialization if there's going to be aggression involved. Then he's getting something else. He's getting bad habits. Okay, so this is the leashed dog in the middle of the park. He's lost his ball, just like the other one lost his pine cone. He's trying yeah, to get you know away. I, I, I like to he's very tolerant. He's not, you know, doing anything terrible. He's giving a very polite, hey, come on, bug off. Probably he was leaving, and he got halfway there, and he started talking to somebody. Again, he's not going after the puppy. I think he's being very, very polite under the circumstances. You know, he's, he's saying, oh, okay, I really don't want you doing that. Yeah, so this is a problem. Um, I'm going to show you now, and this is the one that I think I find disturbing. I, I kind of think you guys will too. Um, this is a fear-reactive dog who should not be in the park in the first place, and his owner has absolutely no clue 
that the dog is fear reactive. All he sees is the dog's bad behavior. Well, things like, like what makes them want, you know, I don't know, do they do that over food or... This is the dog who I, I see that licking thing with that I was talking about she before. Can, she can't growl too much because she'd have to open her mouth a little bit to growl louder. So she's like, ooh, ooh, ooh. I think Bella's women lose. I, I think so too. You're going to tear that shell. <laughs> So look at this dog's tail. Look at his whole body language. And I will show you this in slow motion afterwards. As the Dane gallops away. So the guy walks in with his coffee and his newspaper. Okay, so look, already the dog is a bit tense. And I mean, granted, there's a, <laughs> a pony came up to him, right? So it's a little weird. I've never seen that at the dog park before. At this point, this dog is still okay. He's investigating. His tail's not totally tucked. But this dog comes over. And again, this is the dog that has been a problem with other dogs. And I want to say for the record that um, the owner of that dog realizes that the dog is a problem now and has stopped taking him. I mean, not the fear reactive one, but the uh, shepherd mix. Yeah, to her credit. Okay, so immediately, this dog's only been in the park for what, like maybe 10 seconds altogether? Okay, so now we have another incident. This is the same visit, this is just a continuation. So now the dog's had four or five little mini incidents already before this ever happens, right? Rocky. The shepherd's gone. I do not want any of that. They call it a tag. Oh wait, it gets worse. Dog kept it together there. Now have another okay? incident. And now the guy is starting to want to grab the guy's collar and, 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 and tell the dog off. Look at that. He nailed that dog. That poor dog. Who now, his day is ruined at the dog park. Okay, that was not a fun day for him. Same, this is just a continuation. I just broke it up. It's, it's, this all happened. Same time, same dog. Now, granted, he stopped the dog from going after another dog, which is nice, but... He, what is he punishing this dog for? Why is the dog going after other dogs? He's uncomfortable. He's defensive. This is so overwhelming. This dog absolutely does not want to be there. So another incident, he's like, oh, the pony's back, I'm going to go after him. And again, the guy grabs the dog by the collar, tells him off. And now the dog is restrained with these other dogs around. So he's really, a, yeah, he's afraid, he's defensive. Okay, so now he's let the dog go again. Nervous, shake off. Never wanders far from the, from the dad, always keeps an eye on him. He's climbing up on him. He's like, will you please get me out of here? And the dad just kind of ignores him. He's like, can we go now? And you see that dog come over and he just looks at his dad? I mean, that's good. And now you're petting the pony. Stop doing that. Water. 
Has he corrected this poor dog already? This one? This one. He's scared. Aspen. Aspen, no. Aspen, no. Come. Yeah. Hey, hang on Watch one second. Stay out of it. Monty, no. I'll tell you. There is a woman who uh, you, you could see for a second that was part of this sort of group of people that comes a lot to the park. And I want to let you know that they actually said something to him. I was filming and just biting my tongue and stopping myself because I really wanted to go over and say something. Are you ready, girl? Yeah, th this woman here actually said something to him. <laughs> yeah, this is awful. I mean, do you not want to just go and say, look at your dog? Okay, this is the opposite of being an advocate for your dog. And that poor dog, every time he goes to the park, can you imagine? Oh, God, we're going into the park again. It's terrible. It's upsetting. You know, it really is. And, you know, I do think that people need to be told. It's unfortunate that a lot of times if you go and say something to somebody like that, what happens? They get really, really defensive. They get really, really nasty. You know? And I want to make a suggestion that if, you know, I can see this upset a lot of you, and it upsets me too. Um, if you are going to go over and try to talk to somebody, and by all means, try to educate people wherever you can, because, right, that's what we're all doing. But don't go over and just say, hey, you know, did you see your dog? Because that's just going to put somebody on the defensive. I always, I mean, regardless of what I see, because I see all kinds of stuff, just like you guys do, you know, pinch collars and flexies and, and you know, all, all kinds of things. I always go up to people and, and make friends with them first or make friends with the dog first. Oh, he's really cute. Is it okay if I say hi? And I start talking to them. Oh, look, you know, I love this. He, da, 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 da. And then once we're talking, I'll say something like, you know, I noticed before when that other dog came up, he looked really uncomfortable. You know, and I know you probably feel like you have to correct him, but really, he's really being good and he's just being defensive. I mean, I would really, honestly, I would put it in that way and in that tone of voice, even though inside me there's a little voice screaming, do you not see? <laughs> you know, because you're not going to get through to anybody that way. So always trying to kind of befriend the person first, no matter what, because it is for the higher good, you know, of everybody and especially for the dog. So any comments or other than that was awful? I have great restraint. Yeah, no, that really, honestly, that was hard. So I, I know that, you know, that was difficult to watch. So really, what should we do? What should we do if we see a problem starting to happen? And let's say it's your dog that's involved, right? Well, first of all, breaking up a dog fight, you don't ever want to get in the middle with your hands. You know that. Okay, and I'll say a lot of us know that, but do it anyway. You know, take two dogs by the collar and kind of pull them apart. Yeah, I've done that. I have scars. Because what happens is you try to give one dog back. And people are standing there going, <laughs> which is a problem. Yeah, because you're the one that's like in there, right? And then they're like, oh. and, or if you finally hand them off, they go, oops. And the dog, you know, yeah. And if one of those dogs gets let go, it's going to launch at the other one. Poor dog who's, you know, being restrained. So what can you do if the worst happens? Um, if you are in an area where there's a water hose nearby, which doesn't happen a lot, but it, it, it's worth mentioning, hose the dogs, just see if you can get it, aim for the nose and mouth. Um, you also, if it hasn't developed into a full-fledged fight yet, but you can really just see something, you know, something like another dog needs to come and split them up, but they're not, you can actually be that splitter. You can actually get in there between the dogs and kind of, and again, they're not fighting when you do this. You just put your body language in, and I've done this with Sierra when another dog's actually started to get kind of crappy with her. I've actually gone in and I've kind of gone like that, and I, I'm kind of leaning forward, and I've kind of run the dog off just with my body language. I'm not hitting them. I'm not doing anything terrible to them. And believe me, they understand, you know. Um, if there is another person there and there is an actual fight and this person is, you know, awake and able to help you, you can, and this is the old standby, right, you can actually grab the legs of the dogs, but there are important things to know about that. Number one, you want to grab above the knee 
because you can actually like hurt a dog. You can actually break their leg if you're not careful. You also, both of you have to grab the dog and you have to pull back away from each other. And I would suggest having the dog on a bit of an angle as well because you know what can happen. The dog can say, hey, what are you getting involved in? You know, it's like a domestic dispute where, you know, the cough comes to try to break something up and they go off on him, you know? So, so the dog can redirect. So you want to make sure about that as well. Um, if you are there and... You know, a lot of the times when your dog gets into a fight, your instinct is to grab your own dog away. But here's the thing. If the other dog is being the aggressor, you want to grab that dog. You don't want to grab your dog. And it's weird to grab another person's dog. So you have to kind of train yourself to do that. So you want to grab the other dog and, and pull him off of your dog. Now, hopefully your dog's not going to go after that dog because he's restrained. But the thing is, you're protecting your dog. Um, if it's not possible to do that, if, the, if you have anything on you, if you're wearing a sweatshirt, yeah, you know, or, or carrying anything, get that in between the two dogs, stuff it in the dog's mouth if you can. Again, the, the idea is not that we're trying to hurt the other dog, we just want to stop things in, in as peaceful a way as possible. Um, and, and I want to say too that, you know, when dogs start to fight, a lot of times people make it worse. Because they run over and they start yelling, and it's almost like egging on two little kids, and it really escalates. Oh, you're barking too. Oh, you know, now we're more aroused than we were before. So you've got to be kind of careful about it. Um, and I want to say also that, you know, if you absolutely have to, if a dog is flat out attacking your dog, and I know that this is totally against our nature as absolute dog lovers, you have to do whatever you have to do to get that dog off of them. And I'm sorry, I think that if it is your own dog and he's really being attacked, I think something kicks in where you just do whatever you have to do to protect your dog, you know. And hopefully it never comes to that. So I just really want to say thank you, guys. It was a pleasure. And I hope that this has given you some better ideas about what to look for in dog-dog play and how to organize play groups and such. Just go out there and, you know, be nice to people but educate them. So thank you for coming. <laughs>